You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension, a dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. Letitia? Yes, Miss Winter? Would you get me my sun hat? Right here. I knew you were going to need it, so I brought it from the house special. Thank you, Letitia. What about my dark glasses and my sun lotion? Right over there by the wet bar. Get them for me, will you? Yes, ma'am. Can I bring you some iced tea? No, thanks. How about a nice glass of lemonade? A vodka and orange juice would be more like it. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Where are the children? Still in their rooms? Well, now they were. Just changing into their swimsuits after school. They should be down in a minute. That's nice. Is my book over there? Sure is, right where you left it this morning. Bring it to me. Coming right up. I don't know why I bother to read these things. They don't do one bit of good. I'm okay, you're not. Somebody's making a fortune telling people what they already know. Yes, ma'am. No running now. Whatever you do, children, do it quietly. Mother has a king-size headache. Okay. Sport. Where are you off to? Down to the pool. Jeb and me are going swimming. Jeb and I. Don't you two have any homework? Nope. Jeb? Well, just a little, Mama. But we can do it after supper. Promise? We promise. Can we go now? Yes, you may. Be careful. Your brother's not as good a swimmer as you. And too. Come here, young man. Aw, oh, Mom. Kiss your mother hello. All right. That's a good boy. When's Daddy coming home? Don't ask me. That man keeps his own hours. Bye, Mom. Keep an eye on your brother. <laughs> no diving off the deep end and no shouting. Will there be anything else, Ms. Winter? Just one. Yes. Make me another drink. <laughs> yes, ma'am. To have children, to love them and watch them grow, is the most precious gift life has to give. But to have children and not love them is a sad mistake, one that's not easily remedied. Because when left to their own devices, children may have no choice but to seek a world of their own. Meet Sport, barely eleven, and Jeb, her younger brother. They don't know it yet, but they are about to be cast adrift in a mysterious place called the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, Bewitchin' Pool, starring Karen Black with Stacey Keach as your narrator. Jeb, what are you doing? <coughs> Holding your breath? You're going to suffocate yourself. What are you doing that for, anyway? It's the only way I can keep quiet. 
Mama didn't mean we couldn't talk. It was the yelling and hollering that made her have a headache. I'm just a natural born screamer. Can't play unless I holler. I know a quiet game. Yeah? How do you play? Well, look down there, in the water. That's not a game. Jeb, come on. Okay, I'm looking. Now what? What do you see? A swimming pool. What do you think? Do I have to explain everything to you? It's a pretend game. Well, what do you see? Hmm, a river. You and me floating on a raft, just like Tom Sawyer. No! Now we're coming to an island. What's on the island? It's all full of caves and rattlesnakes and pirates. And witches? Well, I guess you can have one witch. Just one. A fat one! Who ever heard of a fat witch? I don't like skinny ones. They're scary. They don't make fat ones. It's my witch. I can make her fat if I want to. It's my game. You loud mouth kids, pipe down over there. I better shut up. Mama will get mad at me. No, she won't. She loves you. Then why does she yell like that? It's just the way she acts, because of her headaches. You know something, Sport? What? I love you. You're the best sister I ever had. You're silly. Come on, let's go swimming. Yeah! You're home early. What? I said, you're home early, darling. Where are the kids? In the pool. Who's watching them? Nobody. Is that right? Sport's an excellent swimmer. They don't go in the deep end. What were you doing in town today? Oh, now I'm being followed. I saw your car in the parking lot next to the TV station. I had an interview. Anything wrong with that? An interview? For what? I'm tired of my talent going to waste. Your talent? Show me one high fashion model who can hold a candle to me. Is that what you are this week? A high fashion model? Seems to me last week you were an artist. If they call me, I'm taking the job. You'll see. <laughs> You've got a job right here. Taking care of the two kids. Then what's the maid for, sugar? What are you for, Gloria? I can see it. Can you? Yeah. In the yard is a big old swing made out of a tire. You're good. Then what happens? Well... The little boy gets tired of swinging and goes in the kitchen. It smells like chocolate cake. There's a lady there. She picks up the little boy and hugs him. Uh, the little boy feels happy. The, the lady gives him a piece of cake and... You might as well know here and now I'm fed up with the whole mess. What mess are you referring to? I'm referring to the fact that I'm tired of footing a bill for your every little whim. Art school, modeling, dance lessons, guitar lessons, acting lessons. You've got time for anything and everything except being a mother. There's old Tom Sawyer again. He's in the cave trying to rescue Becky Thatcher from Injun Joe. See, Jeb? I think so. I got a business to look after. I know what kind of business you're looking after. Now Tom's leading Becky along the cliff. Must be about a million mile drop, but Tom isn't scared. Jeb, are you listening? If that's what you think, why don't you come on down to the office? Come down to the office? That's what you said when I married you. Well, I came down to that stinking factory of yours, and all I could see was pretty little secretaries flirting with everyone in sight. Are they yelling because we've been bad? Heck no. Maybe I was bad and I didn't know it. Don't worry. They'll stop in a while. I don't know why I bother even talking to you. Then don't. Hey! 
What's that? Hey, yourself. Who are you? Want to have some fun? Where do you come from? Yeah, how'd you get in our pool? Never mind that. Just dive down. Come on. What is going on over here? Nothing. I can't even have a conversation without you brats yelling. We were just talking to this boy. What boy? In the water. He was here and then he was gone. There's nobody else in the pool. But he's got to come up for air. No, Jeb. We were just playing pretend. Pretend? You fool kids. Where'd Daddy go? He went in the house. Supper will be on the table soon. You'd better be dried off and ready. Don't you go off and play. I mean it. Yes, Mama. What's the matter with you guys? Are you coming or not? Where? A secret place. Secret? Where's that? Who are you, little boy? Where'd you come from? You'll find out. Let's go. Do we have time? Well, I have my supper now. You think I'd cook for you after the way you talk to me? You can drink your supper. Oh, like you? I wish I'd left you years ago. Well, what's keeping you? Come on, Jeb. Let's go with that boy. He said not to leave. When I think of the career I gave up for you, it makes me sick. Career? That's a laugh. I hate this house and everything in it. I hate you. They don't care what we do. What if they hurt each other? I'm older than you, and you have to do what I say. Now follow me. Well, here goes. There he is, sitting on a rock. What's he doing? Fishing? Don't you know anything? Hey, you guys, come on out. He looks just like Tom Sawyer. He does, kind of. Hey, where are we? Come on, Jeb. Let's find out. Grab my hand. There you go. Here, take these. One for each of you. Where'd you get these big old towels? Aunt T sent them along just in case. We weren't sure if you were coming or not. Aunt T, dry yourself off, Jeb. Where are we? Aunt T's, of course. Where's that? A secret place. We sure got here, funny. Just dived in our pool and came out here. Want to see a minnow? What's a minnow? A fish. Sure. I keep it in a jar over here. Where'd you get it? I caught it. You can catch all kinds of fish here, at least the ways when no one's swimming. Can I catch one? You don't know how. How do you know I don't know how? I saw where you live. Went to fishing hole for miles. I do too know how to fish. Don't die, sport. Boy, I want to know something. Don't call me boy. I got a name. What is it then? I told you, Wit. Wit who? Just Wit. I used to have a last name before I came to live with Aunt T, but I forgot it. What were you doing in our pool? Just looking. How'd you get there? How did you get here? I can't figure that out yet. I'm studying about it. Can I catch a fish, please, Sport? We gotta find our way home. Aunt T will be mighty disappointed. Better stop in and say howdy. Well, I got no time to go around saying howdy to people. Sport, I'm cold. Yeah, the sun's going down. We can't be far from home. We'll get back there somehow. Sport, how did we get here? Well, the way I figure it, there's a hole in the bottom of our pool that nobody knows about. Maybe we got caught in the tide. <laughs> That's a good one. Don't you laugh at my brother? <laughs> I will if I want to. And don't you laugh at me either. You're just a girl. I'll chew you up and spit you out in little pieces, boy. Ha! <laughs> Let's see you. All right then. You better put your hands up, boy, 'cause I'm gonna sock you right in the jaw. Ha! Can't catch me. Just you watch. Wait. 
Report! Look! I'm looking. Where did all these kids come from? I don't know, Jeb. But I think this must be Aunt T's place. There. Lots of frosting. And a fine cake, if I do say so. Auntie! Auntie! Why, whatever is the matter with it? She's gonna beat me up, Auntie. I sure am, boy. She'll do it, too. Will you really, child? I am, too. Yes, ma'am. Very well. But I'll have to ask you to fight outside and not in my kitchen. You're liable to break something here. Auntie, it ain't fair. It is, if it's a fair fight. Here now, you both take these boxing gloves. I'll keep some put away just in case. And remember, don't hit a man when he's down. No hitting below the belt. You know the rules. I do, but maybe she doesn't. My sister knows everything. Is that right, little man? What's your name? Jeb. Well, Jeb, I'll tell you what. While they're settling their grievances, you can finish icing the cake. Would you like that? Can I? And then, if those two have any teeth left in their heads, they can help us eat it. Go on outside now. Jeb and I have work to do. Is this real chocolate? Why, it sure is. Nothing but the best in my kitchen. Chocolate's my favorite. Mine, too. There you go. Use a knife and smear it right on. Oh, very accomplished. Have much experience frosting cakes? No, ma'am. This is my first one. Do tell. I'd never have guessed. Why, what are you two doing back here? Back already? We didn't go yet. No. Why not? May I try that, too? And me? I thought you couldn't wait to beat each other up. Later. We'd rather do this. That right, Ben? Yup. I mean, yes, Auntie. Very well. Here's a knife for each of you. Take your time, Jeb. Do it right. I am. My, you are such solemn children. Don't you know how to laugh? Sometimes. But not now. What's there to laugh at? Oh, you have eyes. Take a look around. I'm a rather ridiculous old party, wouldn't you say? <laughs> you could laugh at me. <laughs> You're not funny. You're nice. Thank you. Out of the mouths of babes. Riddles, then. Who knows a riddle? I do. I do. Me too. You, let's hear it. Um, why wouldn't the mommy horse let her baby go outside and play? That's a good one. Why? Because he had a sore throat and he was feeling a little hoarse. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, Jeb. Me next. Me. Young lady. What is the laziest mountain in the world? <sighs> the laziest mountain in the world? Who has the answer? Give up? The laziest mountain in the world is Mount Everest. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My turn. All right, Whip. What do you call someone who crosses the ocean twice and doesn't take a bath either way? Oh, that is a hard one. Somebody who crosses the ocean twice and doesn't take a bath. A dirty double crosser. Oh. <laughs> Aunt T, all the frosting's gone. And just in time. What a handsome job you've done with the cake. Looks kind of lopsided to me. Nonsense. It's perfect. While it's cooling, I'll assign you new children your chores and show you where your rooms will be. Come along. <laughs> this way. What's the matter? We didn't come here to stay. My dear, children always come here to stay. What? No. 
But I want to. Jeb! What are you hugging me for, boy? I want to stay. You come back here. I'm staying with Aunt T. She's a kidnapper. Oh, no, my dear. Mind you, I've seen children I would have stolen if I could. What for? To get them away from unworthy parents. But I've always resisted the temptation. Then why are all these kids here? Because their families didn't deserve them. All they wanted was to be loved. So they could grow up right and get out on their own. But some moms and dads didn't realize what they had. Somebody needed to give these little ones a chance. How about me? Oh, I found you on a doorstep when you were only a few hours old. It was a lucky thing I came along on that cold winter's night. What did I look like? You were as red as a beet. From crying. But you were so cold. Somebody had to do something. Sport! Jab! They're calling us. Who is? Our mother and father. I don't want to go. You darn kids, where are you? <laughs> it's that way for a lot of kids. We better go home now. These voices you hear call. At first they seem quite strong. But they get fainter and fainter, and after a while, they fade out. And one day, you simply cannot hear them anymore. Sport, I'm calling you, young lady. Don't pretend you can't hear me. We've got to go home. Can you tell me why? I've got everything you need right here. Why, there's the swimming hole down by the creek. The days are long, with all manner of things to do and see. And then there's always a hot meal and lots of children to play with. Blind Man's Bluff, Ringolivio, and the Red Rover, Red Rover, all kinds of games. Some I bet you never heard of. <laughs> see that little girl out there with the pigtails? When she came here, she never had smiled. All that changed pretty quick, let me tell you. Now all she does is laugh all the live long day. Makes my heart glad to see them so happy. That's why I bake a big cake every day, just the way they like it. We've just got to, because that's where we belong. We're, they're children and, and they love us. And well, we love them. In that case, you must. No. You too, little man. Your sister's reasons are good ones. I cannot argue with them. Can you tell us one thing? What's that? How do we get home? Oh, the same way you got here. But I don't know how we got here. <laughs> I think you do. Try to remember. It isn't far. Come on, Jeb. We'll come see you again real soon, won't we, Sport? No, my darlings. I expect this is our goodbye. Finding your way back here would be difficult, if not impossible. But I want you to know that I consider it an honor to have met you, however briefly. You will always have a place here in my heart. Here's where he came out of the water. It's a good place to dive. Just stand out there on that rock, take a deep breath, and jump. You'll see. It's easy. Stand next to me, Jeb. Do we have to? I'm your big sister. You have to do what I say. Bye, Wit. Bye, little Jeb. You mind your sister now. Wit? Yeah? I just wanted to tell you, I wasn't really going to beat you up. I was just talking. Me too. Well, bye now. Bye, sport.
Don't let the bugs bite. Have you found them? Not a sign. I told them not to leave the yard. I told them. Well, that's just it. They have no respect for you. You aren't firm enough with them. What about you? You're never here. Try putting up with their whining and screaming 24 hours a day. Gloria, look! Mama? Sport, where's your brother? Here! Where have you two been? We've been calling you for an hour. In the pool. You're lying. I looked in the pool. We we really were, Daddy. And we came up on the other side, and we helped make a cake with Aunt T. What's he talking about? And we caught a fish. He's not making things up, Daddy. Honest. He's lying to cover up whatever devilment the two of you have been into. Jeb, come here. But it's true, Daddy. Come here, I said. Look at me. I want the truth out of you. No more lies. You want to stand it wasn't a lie. It wasn't. It was Now you listen to me. Get in your room and stand in the corner till you can tell me where you've really been all this time. Do I make myself clear? Yes, Daddy. He understands now. It was a game, Daddy, that's all. Just a game. We were pretending. There isn't any auntie. I should hope not, but I want to hear it from him. Do as your father says. Go to your room. And forget about any dinner tonight. You've missed it. Both of you. Jeb! Over here, Mama. What are you doing by the pool? I got up early. I couldn't sleep. Where's your brother? In his room, I guess. No, he's not in his room. I checked. He's nowhere in the house. Well, I haven't seen him. Is breakfast ready? Not yet. Your father is waiting to talk to you. What about? I'll let him explain it to you. But there are going to be some changes around here. What kind of changes? You'll see. Things are going to be different. Will things be better? You bet your sweet life they will. Now find Jeb and hurry. All right, Mama. Here goes. Yes, Jim. What are you making that quilt for? Because we need quilts. Lots and lots of them. To keep the children warm and snug at night. Don't you know anything? Sure I do. I know lots of things. When you finish cleaning the shoes, your next chore will be to help Whit bring in the wood for the stove. Aunt T? Hmm? Why do they have to be chores? Every child must have chores to do. It teaches the value of work, the self-respect of doing a job well. Makes big muscles, too, like mine. Let's see. Roll up your sleeves. I told you. Big, ain't they? Wow. Keep working, boys. You have more shoes to clean. What are all the shoes for, anyway? They're for the children, too, of course. Think of it, you and your sister didn't have any shoes at all when you came here yesterday. They all got holes in their swimming pools too, Auntie? Oh, dear me, no. <laughs> Some of them don't have swimming pools. Some come down the chimney or you open the door and there they are. Sometimes you find them on street corners or on a doorstep like Whitty. 
What's that? Oh, it's someone's outside, at the window. It's my sister. Sport, dear. Come in. Oh, come in. I can't. I'm dripping wet. Wait a minute. I'll get a towel from the cupboard. Here you are, my dear. Thanks. I told you she'd come. I'm surprised that either of you made it. It's very rare for anyone to find the way here a second time. I'm sorry to bother you, ma'am. You're not bothering me in the least. As a matter of fact, I'm delighted to have someone here who can help me with the quilting. You do so. No, ma'am. Oh, well, you'd be surprised at how quickly you learn. I can't stay. Oh? I only came to get Jeb. I ain't going. It'll be different at home now. Mama told me. Told you what? They aren't going to yell at each other anymore. Is that all? We're going to take trips together. Where? Oh, everywhere. Disneyland and Ohio and Australia and the North Pole. Anywhere we want to go. I don't want to go to those places. Jeb Sherwood, are you coming or do you want me to throw you over my shoulder like a sack of potatoes and carry you home? Have things changed where you live? Yes, ma'am. Everything's going to be better now. In what way? They're going to love us. Really? Mama told me, and she wants to tell Jeb, too. You know, Jeb, it would look quite undignified if she threw you over her shoulder like a sack of potatoes. Don't you think so? If I were you, I would go willingly. I'm staying. If we live this time, we won't ever get back here again. Besides, I've got chores to do. If what sport tells us is true, Jeb, then you are not meant to be here at all. You are meant to be home with your mother and father. Do I have to go? I strongly advise it. You'll see, Jeb. It won't be so bad. Jeb, listen closely. There is only one truly precious thing a person can give, and that is love. If I were a young person on his way to receive such a wondrous gift, I do believe I would go with a smile on my face. Much better. Now, don't dawdle. If love were waiting somewhere for me, I would run to it as swiftly as the wind. You ain't kidding me? I ain't kidding. Then, bye, Wit. Bye. Don't worry about us, Aunt T. Everything's going to be just fine. I sincerely hope so. Goodbye, love. Maybe we should wait till tonight. No. You said you'd talk to them. Let's get it over with. I've got a half dozen people waiting for me at the office. For once, just once, would you mind putting your family ahead of your work? I'm not the one. It's you. Lower your voice. Here they are now. Sorry. You're wet. I sent you to find your brother, not to play in the pool. That's where he was, in the pool. Do you know what happens to children who tell lies? We go to hell and get burned up. Well, you're here now. Sit down. Your father has some good news to tell you. Sport already told me. We're all going to be happy again and go on trips and... I can't do this, Gloria. You tell them. Very well. Your father and I are getting a divorce. If you don't know what that is, it means he's going to live in one place and I'm going to live in another. Where? As far apart as we can get. But... but... What we want to know is... Do you kids want to live with me, or do you want to live with her? I suppose we could split you up if you'd prefer. No, I want to be with Sport. It's up to you. Make up your own minds. We, we want it the way it was. We... Well, you can forget it. I'm into that. We'll be good. This time we really will. We won't fight or cry or make noise. We'll be so good. Won't we, Jeb? What are you talking about? It's all our fault. You hate each other because of us. Oh, that's not true. I'll tell you one thing. 
We wouldn't have stuck it out this long if it hadn't been for you two. You might show a little consideration. I don't have to stay with either of you. Me neither. Come back here. We're not through with you. Hurry, before they catch us. I can hold my breath a real long time. I've been practicing. I know you can. Get ready. On your mark. What do you think you're doing? Stop them. What if we can't get back? We've got to. Get set, go. Come out of there right now. This time, you're going to get what you deserve, but good. Are you coming out, or do I have to drag you out? Aunt T, help us. Help us, please. Aunt T. I need you. Take us now. Get out of that pool. I am not going to tell you again. Do you hear what Daddy said? He means it. Aunt T! Gil, they're staying down there a long time. I know. Do something. They're drowning. All right. Don't let them drown. Don't let them drown. <laughs> They're not down there. But they've got to be. It's broad daylight. They can't just disappear. Where could they go? Jeb! Sport! What is it, Sport? It looks so far away. Huh? Oh, I... I thought I heard something. Well, did you? I guess not. Children! Where are you? Come back! Please come back! Don't you want any? What, Auntie? Oh, I asked you, child, if you'd like a piece of chocolate cake. Oh. Oh, yes! May I please? Why, you certainly may. Me too. The end of an odyssey for two children who were cast adrift for a time. They took a chance searching for love and finally found it in the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Carl Amari, producer of the Twilight Zone radio dramas. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our official website at twilightzoneradio.com, where you'll get the latest news and information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas. Plus, at twilightzoneradio.com, you can digitally download three free episodes or any of our episodes for only $1.95 each. In this age of ever-changing technology, we've decided to make these episodes instantly available to you by making the Twilight Zone radio dramas a digital download-only series. This means that this series will no longer be offered on CD. The CD collections at our website are now being offered, while supplies last, at buy one, get one free. So be sure to get your favorites before they're sold out. Be sure to visit us often, and I'll see you in the zone. Bewitchin' Pool, starring Karen Black with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and written for The Twilight Zone by Earl Hamner Jr. Heard in the cast were Haley Nabig, Eli Newman, Evan Armacost, Kurt Nabig, Rangan Alte, and Ora Jones. The producers of The Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises and the Rod Serling Estate for making this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Jeff Lupiton for Falcon Picture Group and Westwood One. Sound design and custom Foley effects for the Twilight Zone by Cerny American Creatives Bob Benson, Craig Lee, Matt Sorrow, Tim Cerny, and Todd Beyer. 
To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to contact us, visit our official website at twilightzoneradio.com. Doug James speaking. <laughs>